Good day, everyone. Welcome to Walking in the Spirit, which is hosted by the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research of Omaha. My name is Dr. Stefan Williams, and I'll be your host of this program. Um, we're going to get into what, we're, what we call, what is, what is called in Bibles, visions, okay? And I know um, some people have a, have a difficult uh, time with, um, with, with uh, visions, I would say, okay? And I want to say um, what you see pictorially illustrated before you is a result, see, of a divine vision and the divine revelation, see, given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clipper Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. And these charts are, are uh, pictorial illustrations of what was shown him in his vision. And this is your Bible from Genesis to Revelations and pictorial illustrations, all right? Now, we're going to uh, spend this time on visions, okay? And we're going to prove visions from your Bible. We use primarily the Holy Name Bible, and we use also the King James Bible, red letter edition. I need you to give for me Habakkuk 2 and 2. Habakkuk 2 and 2, out of the Holy Name Bible. Yes. I will write, I will stand upon my watch uh -huh. and set me upon the tower, and will watch to see what he will say unto me. Yes. And what I shall answer when I am reproved. Uh huh. And Yahweh answered me and said, Write the vision. Now he's talking, now Habakkuk, we understand, is, is a prophet of Yahweh, okay? Who the world calls God or the Lord or Jehovah, you understand? But we're going to be using the true and correct names, okay, of our Heavenly Father which you see pictorially illustrated for you up here. His true name is Yahweh. We're going to use the true title of the Word or Son, Elohim, and we're going to be using the, the, true, the true name of the Holy Spirit, which is Yahshua, okay? That's what we're going to be using primarily, but we will, we will use Lord God and Jesus Christ when, when need be to make corrections on Lord, Jehovah God, Jesus and Christ, okay? But he said, write the vision, Make it plain upon tables. He said, now make it plain upon tables. Now, we need to look at the definition of the word tables real quick. All right? Go ahead, please. Definition of the word uh, tables. tables, yes. And where will you be reading it from? Out of the American Heritage Dictionary. The definition the of the word tables. Yes. An orderly arrangement of data. It says now an orderly arrangement of data, read. Especially one in which the data are arranged in columns. Okay, now I can say these are columns. All right? And rows is ranged in is arranged with data, right? Right. In columns and in rows. Is that right? Right. Read. Especially one in which the data is arranged in column and rows, uh -huh. and, and in essentially a, a re rectangular form. Okay, so these plates on these charts or, or on these tables are in rows. Is that right? Yes. And in columns, see, and they are in rectangular shape. So, in other words, these charts. Which has which 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 has which is also called tables, yes. has spiritual has spiritual principles laid out for eating, you know, for your soul. Okay, so this is what this this is what this is about, and this was given to the Habakkuk, the prophet, in this what we call third age post moving age. This is called our dispensation an ages chart, which we'll get into later in a further further broadcast, all right? So I need you to get from me, I believe it's 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. Read on. 2 Timothy, 
the fourth chapter, verse 13. Read on. Holy name Bible. Read. The clock that I left at Tyrus. Now, this is Apostle Paul has wrote, has written a letter to Timothy. He, he's asking Timothy to bring a few things with him. Read. With, with Carpus, uh -huh. with the commonness, bring with the, the books, especially the parchment. Now he said for Timothy to bring the books, but he said especially bring the parchments. So we need to look at the definition of the word parchment, please. We, Parchments, please, if you will. Parchments out of the American Heritage Dictionary. Now, I need you to hold it for a minute. So what we got to read in the first one is Habakkuk, the second chapter, verse 1, 2. And you can just read the whole chapter for, your, for yourself, viewing audience. But it says for Habakkuk to write the vision and make it plain upon tables that the vision was yet for an appointed time. So the vision that Habakkuk was prophesying to come in is what you see pictorially illustrated before you on these charts, or you can also call them tables, or you can also call them parchments, all right? And it came in at the end of this fourth age, which we, which we all reside in, if you're still living, fourth age, present kingdom age, okay? At the end of this age, which is called our spiritual kingdom on earth, spiritual assembly, body of Yahshua, okay? Holy Spirit through faith, Okay, and it says um, Pentecost, Spirit Law, New Testament, or New or New Covenant. Okay, so this came in at the end of this age. But what you're reading about in Second Timothy four, about Timothy, well, Paul writing to Timothy and, and told him to bring the books, especially the parchments that that started in the beginning of this uh, present kingdom age. Okay, we're at the end now, but this was going on at the beginning. Read on. Def parchments. Read on. Parchments. Read. Out of the American Heritage Dictionary. Uh-huh. A, a, a skin of a sheep or goat. A skin of a, or a, a skin of a sheep or goat. Prepared for writing or painting. All right. So you can see that this, 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 these charts has painting or them or, or parchments, right? And these charts are made out of sheep skin okay you got what i'm talking about and this is the way that the creator of the universe see yahweh wants his people to learn about him you got me by pictorial illustrations to go along with the bible you got me okay continue to read i need you to get from me now we're going to continue to validate visions okay to let one know that this that visions is not a new thing I need you to forgive for me Proverbs 29, 18, please. Proverbs 29, 18, out of the Holy Name Bible. Read on. Where there is no prophetic vision. Now it says where there is no prophetic vision. If you haven't seen these charts similar or to where you have been going to, to do your worship in a, in a, in a, in a, uh, uh, a so-called church building, you got me? Uh, a mosque, a temple, you understand? Catholic assembly, Jehovah's Witness halls. If you have never seen these before in your life, where you go to worship, that is not a result of a divine vision or prophetic vision that came direct from your creator. Read on. Where there is no prophetic vision. It said where there is no prophetic vision. It said where there was one. Read. The people perish. It said the people perish or the people's souls are dying, okay? So that's why it's very important that one must have a divine vision accompanied by a divine revelation, and it has to come direct from the creator himself. You got me? Yes. All right. Continue on to, uh, let's get the next one. Get from me Numbers 12 and 6. Holy Name Bible. Yes, sir. Numbers 12 and 6. Yes. And he said, Hear now my words. Uh huh. If there be a prophet among you. He said, Now, this is Yahweh speaking. He said, Now, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, there might not be one, but if there is one among you, read. Uh, when you talk about true prophets, too, read. 
I Yahweh, I Yahweh will make myself known unto him in a vision. He will make himself known unto him in a vision now. Read. And will speak unto him in a dream. It will speak to him in a dream. You got me? That's, so that's three locations where it talked about visions, all right? Get from me um, Exodus. Exodus 24th chapter, verse 1 and 2, and then go, go, go up to, um, I believe it's verse 9. Read, please. Holy name Bible. Uh -huh. Exodus 24. Read on. And he said unto Moses, Come up unto Yahweh, though, and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, uh -huh. and seventy of the elders of Israel. All right. Read. And worship ye afar off. Uh huh. And Moses alone shall come up. And Moses alone shall come near Yahweh. Okay. But they shall not come near. Okay, that's good. Now I need you to get this right here, so the viewing audience can see. On this chart here, it says vision of Elohim in incorporeal form. Right. Exodus twenty-four, verse one and two, then verse nine. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Now it says in real form, see? So Moses was the only one that could proceed to go all the way into the top of Mount, of Mount, uh, Mount Sinai, all right? Is that what it said? It said yes. Aaron, Nadab, Abide, and 70 elders to come up, also Moses, is that right? Mm -hmm. But Aaron, Nadab, and Abide, could not, and 70 elders could not go as far as, far as Moses went, is that right? Read on. Then went up Moses, mm -hmm. and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, uh -huh. and seventy of the elders of Israel. Uh -huh. And they saw the Elohim of Israel. Now it said that they saw what the, what the world would call God, okay? And we're going to get into that in a later broadcast, all right? About um, can you see what the, who the world calls God or, or not, Okay. So that's why it's very important that, that you use the true and correct name of your heavenly father, his true divine title, you understand, and the name of the Holy Spirit, which is Joshua, okay? That's why it's very important that these names be used. And we'll get into that in a later broadcast also. But we're going to zero in on visions to let one know that visions is not a new thing, okay? Um, Continue to read. Are you finished there? What verse are you on? Ten. Okay, go ahead. And they saw the Elohim of Israel. Uh huh. And there was under his feet. There was under his feet. Now they describe. Now they describe an Elohim, or who the world calls God. They describe him. He said, "Now seventy-three plus Moses makes seventy-four. They're eyewitness to this. They seen God. You got me? Or truly Elohim, read, and he wasn't, he, he says he's in, in corporeal form, meaning no flesh and blood, all right? Shaped in form of a man, but without flesh and blood. Read on. As if it were a paved work of sapphire stone. Okay, so he said that he had feet, is that right? And they say what he stood on was, a, was, a, was like, read that again, please. And they saw the Elohim of Israel. Uh-huh. And there was under his feet. It said feet. that was under his feet. Now they described and they said he had feet. Now read. As it were a paved work of a sapphire stone. Okay. And as it were the body of heaven in this clearness. All right. Okay. So it said that what he stood on was likened unto a sapphire stone. You understand? So you understand when the, when the astronauts, astronauts went to the moon for the very first time and they looked back down to earth. They said that it looked like a sapphire stone. Is that what they said? All right. Continue to read. Continue to read. Joel. Joel. I need Joel 2 and 28, please. Put a name Bible. Yes. Joel 2 and 28. Like I remind everyone, we're focused on visions. That visions is not a new thing, okay? That is very important that one have one. But you cannot have a divine vision on your own. The creator of the universe, which is true name is Yahweh, has to reveal or show himself to you in this form right here and not in his pure spirit state because no one has never seen the wind. You got me? No one has never seen spirit. You got me? So, so it, so it, it, um, 
it took Yahweh's mercy to take on shape and form, okay? As Yahweh Elohim, you got me? And you only can be seen it in this, in this form right here, or in this state, in divine visions, okay? All right? We already got 74 witnesses of that. Is that right? Okay, now go to Joel 2 and 28. Okay. Let's, see what, let's see what Joel says. Read. Read on. And it shall come to pass afterwards uh -huh. that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Now, Joel is, is prophesying. Now, he's another prophet, just like Habakkuk is a prophet, okay? And it's all taking place in this third age, post diluvian age. In this age, in this chart, which we'll get into a, late, a later broadcast, is called our ages and dispensation chart, which it has. First age, second age, third age, fourth age, fifth age, sixth and seventh ages. It has first dispensation, second dispensation, third dispensation, fourth dispensation, fifth dispensation, sixth dispensation, seventh dispensation, okay? So this is what we're going to get into later on in one of our broadcasts, all right? So this is taking place where you're reading from in the third age, post diluvian A, the prophet Joel, what is he prophesying about? Read on. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Okay, so Joel is saying that it shall come to pass after something takes place. So he's saying that after Yahshua, the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ, is going to go through his death, okay? His burial, his resurrection, okay? And he's going to, he's going to, he's going to, in other words, he's going to go through a death in his physical, physical, special prepared body, not a sinful body, but a special prepared body to take on the sins of the world, okay? So he goes through his death. They bury, bury him in Joseph's new tomb. You got me? This body was consumed in the tomb. He resurrected a quickening or back to the form that he was in before he got in the special prepared body, okay? All right? That's what Joel is prophesying about after that takes place. Read on. Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Now he said he's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Who are you speaking, with, speaking about? He's speaking about Yahshua Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. I'm going to stay on that for a minute, okay? After he goes to his death, burial, the, the physical body was, 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 was consumed in a tomb. He rose a quickening spirit, or you can say he rose an uh, incorporeal form. You got me? No flesh and blood now, right? Then he tarries on the earth plane for 40 days, okay? He ascends up to the Father, all right? And, and 10 days after his ascension, he pours out his spirit upon all flesh, which we call Pentecost, which ushered in this fourth age, present kingdom age, okay, which we now reside in, all right? Okay, read on. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Read. Your old men shall dream dreams. Read on. Your young men shall see this. All right, see, there you go again. See, it said, it is, it said, it said over in our time, see, that young men shall see visions. You got me? The creator of the universe, whose true name is Yahweh, see, the heavenly father, is giving visions to young men in this age, this current age, which we now reside in, okay? All right? So visions have been going on all throughout the ages, all throughout history, if you can say it like that, okay? I need you to give from me now, um, Ms. Matthew. Matthew. Matthew 17 chapter, verse 1 and 2. Holy name, Bible. Read on. Matthew 17, 1, 2, and 9. Mm -hmm. And after six days, after six days, Joshua taking Peter, James, and John, uh -huh. his mother. Pictorial illustration right here. Take take after after those after six days, Joshua, who the world called Jesus Christ, okay, did what? And after six days, Yahshua taken Peter, James, and John, his brother. Okay, so you have a pictorial illustration of Peter, James, and John, his brother, read. And bringeth them up unto the high mountain uh, apart. Uh-huh. 
and was transfigured. It was transfigured them, was transfigured before them. See, it's like this it's a high place, Mount Olivet, okay? Mount, Mount Olivet, Mount Tabor. You understand? You got me? High place, mountain, just like Mount Sinai. You got me? So this is, this is the fulfillment. You got me? This is the vision right here. So this white, see, this white here uh, depicts having a divine vision. Okay? All right? Which, you, which, you're going to, which is going to appear right in your head cavity. Okay? You understand? So this right here, what you see, you got three, Peter, James, and John. Just like you have three here, Aaron, Nate, and Abayu. He has 70 elders. You have 70 chosen. You understand? Okay? You got me? So now, this is fulfillment of what took place back here with Aaron, Nadab, and Abayu and the 70 elders and Moses, all right? Same one that transfigured before them here with the same one that transfigured here. You got me? The same one. Read on. And was transfigured before them. Uh huh. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. All right, that's why you have a pictorial illustration of white here. Read on. And as they came down from the mountain. As they came down from the mountain, read. Yahshua charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no All man. All right, so he said, Tell the vision to no man. Tell. Tell no one what I've shown you. I've shown you myself. You understand? Which only which can only be seen in divine visions. You understand? You see how I go? It's not a new thing. All right. Give for me, I believe, is Acts. <coughs> Acts, the second chapter. Start around the 16th verse. <coughs> Her name Acts. <coughs> Read on, please. Acts, the second chapter, 16 and uh, 17. Read. But this is of that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Now, this is taking place over here in, in this current age that we now reside in called the fourth age, present kingdom age, which uh, some people call the age of grace, okay? It's taking place here in the book of Acts, the second chapter. You understand? Read. But this is... Of that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Now he's he referring back to the prophet Joel. The Joel prophesied to come in. Now this is the confirmation of what Joel prophesied to come in. Read. And it shall come to pass in the last days. In the, uh huh. Says Yahweh. Uh huh. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. All right. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Yes. And your young man shall see visions. That's all I want you to read. See, so just, just, just validate and prove visions again. You understand? And, and that's, I believe Peter wrote, wrote, wrote that Acts second chapter. I'm not for sure, but I believe he did. But, but, but the main focus is that you got ages and dispensations when visions are taking place throughout every age to mankind Yahweh appears to to carry out his purpose through, okay? All right. Uh, let's see here. Just get from me Revelations, the first chapter, please. Revelations. Mm-hmm. First chapter, verse 10. Read. Read on. I, I, was, I was in the spirit on the Sabbath day. All right. So now here's John. It says panoramic vision of Elohim, going to pan in, the panoramic vision of Elohim to John in A.D. 96. He's out here on the Isla of Patmos, meaning, meaning in an elevated state, okay? He's confirming what Moses saw back here in an elevated state on top of Mount Sinai, all right? He's saying the self-same one. John is having, he says panoramic vision of Elohim, to Moses in 1490 B.Y., that means before the birth of Yahshua, you understand? Vision of Elohim in incorporeal form, to Aaron, Nadab, and Abayu, vision, visions, vision right here, to Peter, James, and John, they see, they see the self-same one, you got me? So you got 74 eyewitnesses seeing seen the same one, you got 70, 70, uh, Three saw the same one. 
You got John seeing the same one. You have Rebecca and Joel, and I believe it's Peter over in Acts. They saw the self same one, okay? Right here in their head cavity, in the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood, all right? Um, that will conclude this uh, program. We will continue next week, and we're going to continue with visions. Until next week, I'd like to say peace, love, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Thank you.